Matthew chapter 16. We started a uh, series last week that we're going to get into a few things around here, but Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, and we answered, or we began to answer the question last Sunday, why church? I said that we did... You know, we do a lot of things around the church setting. We invite people to church. We push evangelism. We uh, come to church. We give to the church. We are hopefully part of the church. But why? Why are we part of this great group called the church? And we begin to answer that last week. Let's recap just a little bit. Let's go back to our text. And this one is found in uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of, the Caesar, of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? I want to tell you right there, is the most important question ever to be asked. Who do you say that I am? How you answer that question, how those around us all over the world answer that question determines where you're going to spend eternity. Amen. Amen. Whom do men say that I am, but who do you say? That I am. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We'll just stop right there. He said, On this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We answered a question last week. What is church? What is the real definition of church? And I could get into some technical terms from the original text, but we said last week it really is a gathering. It is a gathering together of a called out chosen people And uh, one word applies there really well, an assembly. Or the assembling together of a people. And, And these people are from all walks of life, various backgrounds, but they are coming together as the citizens of the kingdom of God. We said this last week, we'll say it again. You know, you may be in this world, but if you're born again, you're really not of this world. And the Bible teaches us that when we get born again, we are immediately translated into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I live on this earth for the remainder of my life, but I'm not really of this earth, of this world. I'm of another kingdom, the heavenly kingdom. I am a heavenly citizen. Did you know that? You are a citizen of heaven if you're born again. So the church is a gathering of citizens. It is a gathering of people from all these various backgrounds coming together as the body of Christ, the people of God in this earth. And we have one thing, one major thing in common, and that is our faith in the Lord Jesus. We have answered the question, who do men say that I am and who do I say? Who do you say that he is? I say he is Jesus the Christ. I say he is the Son of God. I say he is the Messiah. I say he is my Savior. I say he is my Deliverer. I say he is my Healer. I say he is my Source. He is my Provider. That's who I say he is, and the list can go on and on and on and on, but because we have this one thing in common, we say he is the Christ, we are the citizens of his kingdom, and we're coming together, and when we're together, we are called the church. Shout amen. Amen. Now last week we talked about how the early church stayed together, prayed together, functioned together, and I believe their success was because they stayed together. And we, we proved that in Scripture. We read several passages last week where they were together 
having all things in common, and as a result of their togetherness, great things happened, and the early church was launched. Then we read a great verse. We're going to put this one up for you. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Um, Hebrews 10, verse 20 through 25. The Bible says, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in the full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us, everybody shout us. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promise, let us consider one another to provoke one another unto good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting or encouraging one another so much more as you see the day of the Lord approaching. Now, we pointed out last week three places there. There is the two-little word terminology, let us. And we said to be us, is to be different than being an individual. Amen. Us together do these things. Then we are to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. The NIV said, do not give up meeting together. The New Living Translation said, let us not neglect coming together and meeting together. And we said there is a major word emphasized here, and it is the word together. God knew that there was power to be released when people came together. And he doesn't want us to be isolated. He doesn't want us to try to be an island out to ourselves. He doesn't want us to try to accomplish all the work of the kingdom by ourselves or to even survive by ourselves. God's plan was never to be alone or by ourselves. God wants us to be together. It's called the church. Amen. So we saw that. Now today I want to talk to you briefly about the corporate anointing. Because when we ask the question, why church? We found out last week, well, we can encourage one another. We come together, we pray for one another. We give each other encouraging word. And we, if there was no other reason for us to come together than to receive encouragement in the time of battle, ladies and gentlemen, for that reason alone, we need each other and we need to come together as the church. But there is another aspect of this thing. And that is the corporate anointing. Now, when we use that word corporate, the word corporate means uh, primarily a large group or uh, especially a larger body of people. And we could say very easily the early church on the first day Qualified because they got 3,000 souls saved and I consider that to be pretty significant. So they started in the upper room with 120. But by the end of the day, they have at least 3,120. So now there, there's a, co a corporate group or a larger assembly and they are together in this thing. Everybody didn't just run off in every different direction to start their own church on the day of Pentecost. They were bound together as one body, the body of Christ, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So this group of people suddenly are being used mightily of God. What happened? There was a corporate anointing that began to work. Now let me say this right up front. You as an individual can be, and I believe you are anointed. Amen. If you are a believer, the anointing of God. What is the anointing of God? His presence, His Spirit, His empowerment for you to be able to accomplish what you're supposed to accomplish in the earth. There's an anointing on your life for that as an individual. But I'm going to prove to you today there is a higher anointing, a greater anointing that is released when we come together. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Well, let's look at a classic scripture. This one's found in Matthew chapter 18 and uh, verse starting with verse 19. 
Jesus said, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. And here's another great verse. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Where two or three are gathered together. There's a revelation right here, folks, in these two verses. If any two agree. Well, why did he say if any two shall agree? Well, can one person pray a situation through? Yes. You know, Jesus said, you ask and you shall receive. You seek and you shall find. You knock and it shall be open unto you. That could be on an individual basis. I can ask and receive. And I'm just going to tell you right now, I do have confidence when I pray for myself. And you ought to have confidence in your own prayer. You ought to believe that you can get a prayer through. If you don't have some level of faith that you can get a prayer through, well, you're probably not going to get very far. But there is a different anointing. There is a different spirit release when two come together. Because if any two shall agree as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them. So it's important that you have confidence to pray for yourself. But there is a place where you need something stronger to get involved. And one of the ways you do that is to get somebody to get in agreement with you. Because if any two can agree... Amen. We were praying over somebody here at the altar earlier this morning and uh, uh, just so happened, I think Cora was standing there and I was praying and I was speaking something over this person and Cora was over here speaking in agreement the same thing that I was speaking and when I finished, I looked at her, I said, you agree with that? She said, I agree with that. Somebody said, that's just over-spiritualization. Honey, that's not over-spiritualization. That's just simple Bible. I said, that's a simple Bible. If any two shall agree as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done. But he went a step further with that. He said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Now, I heard that scripture quoted for years. Every time we would show up at church in the little church I grew up in and nobody else showed up, somebody would say, well, you know what the word says, if any two agree, uh, you know, or, or if any two or three gather together in my name, then I'll be in the midst. And we use that as an excuse to be little. But I want to tell you right now, Jesus was never giving this as an excuse to be little. Shout amen to that. Now, if, you, if all you can get is two, and all you can get is two or three. He said, then I'm not going to limit you, but don't limit me by saying all we need is two or three because the truth is the reason some churches are limited to two or three is because they can't get any more people in unity than two or three. I'm preaching better than your amen -ing. Amen. So if we could get two or 3,000 together in agreement, then how much more could God do with the two or 3,000 if we could come together in the spirit of unity and harmony? And that's what I'm going to deal with next week, so I'm not going there this week. <laughs> Amen. But see in Scripture, there is an anointing that comes on people coming together. And we could say it this way, there is a different level. It is this corporate anointing. It is a different level of God's anointing that comes when we come together. And let me prove this to you scripturally because this does not just start with the church. This actually was a principle that happened over and over from the beginning of time. Isn't it interesting that when God looked at Adam, the first person created, the first thing, one of the first things God says is, it is not good for this man, Adam, to be alone. So I'm going to create him a helpmate or a helpmeet, somebody to come along aside him, and this will be a good thing. And can I just say to you, you can believe whatever you want to believe, she was not created as a doormat, she was not created as a lesser than. She was created alongside of him to accomplish the work in the earth that needed to be done. 
man and woman walking together in unity and harmony would accomplish what God had put them in this earth realm to accomplish had it not been for the fall. And that's a story in itself. But from the beginning, God starts this thing of people working together. Now, there's an interesting passage in Leviticus chapter 26. If you look at uh, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 6 through 9, it says, God said, I will give you peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none, none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, Neither shall the sword go through your land, and you shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword, and five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Let's just stop right there. I read that passage, and it doesn't take a genius to see this. Five of you will chase a hundred. Well, if you figure that out, it's going to take five. If I get me five men up here right now and we're going to chase a hundred, that means 20 apiece that we can take care of. I feel pretty good about that. I can whip 20 men. I feel pretty good about it. How many of y'all you feel pretty good about that? Amen. But then notice something. Five would chase a hundred, but he said a hundred would put 10,000 to flight. I sat down and I did the, uh, the addition and the multiplication and looked at it from every angle and it doesn't add up because if you figure that up in what he said, five will chase a hundred, that means if we could get a hundred men, we'd be able to deal with about 2,000. But he didn't say a hundred would deal with 2,000. He said a hundred of you will deal with 10,000. How many can see God has something else in mind than just the natural order of things? And can I say to you, the church too long has only tried to put God in the natural order of things. But I want to announce to you at Grace Fellowship, we're wanting to get him out of the natural order so we can get him over into the supernatural because strange things happen when you get over out of the natural to the supernatural. All right, and this is interesting because if you go over to Joshua chapter 23 verse 10, It says, then one will chase a thousand. Now we have moved from one group of one chasing 20 to one chasing a thousand. And depending on how you look into scripture, it actually, I think we could back this up and I believe we can say this is so, that one would chase a thousand, but then two would chase 10,000. Well, if you look at it from that angle, if one could chase a 1,000 in the natural order, two should chase 2,000. Three should chase 3,000. Four should chase 4,000 and so on. Would that be correct math? But notice here, and I believe we can find it in Scripture enough to back it up, one would chase one set of numbers and then by the time you get to two you've got a whole different set of numbers and there's no way to make this add up or compute in natural math. Why is that? It's because something supernatural was going to occur the moment you got more than one person involved if the more than one were in unity. So when one could chase a thousand Then the anointing of God got in the mix. Two would be able to have this thing of exponential growth and suddenly two is chasing 10,000 and I don't know what three would be able to chase. All I can tell you is there is a supernatural corporate anointing that is released so that supernatural results break loose when people come together. And this is why church. This is why church. This is why you need to come to church. 
This is why we need to worship together, pray together, work together, labor together, believe together. Because my Lord, if Nancy by herself can put a thousand to flight, look how many are here today and guess how many this church could put to flight. Don't just look at it in the natural order. Look at how many demonic kingdoms we can abolish. Look at how many spiritual rulers, wickedness in high places we can bring down. Look at how many demonic attacks we can put to flight just by coming together. And you ask me why, church? Honey, we need to come together to put the devil to flight. See, it's this simple. One can do something, but two can do more. So if we can get together, turn around and tell somebody beside you, we need to be together. Because <laughs> if we can get together, exponential growth happens. And I did a little research because you hear that phrase a lot. We're experiencing exponential growth. And I thought, well, what in the world is exponential growth? And I found out that it is growth that accelerates and you really can't put a number on it because it can grow so fast and it's so rapidly, it, is, it really is almost supernatural even in the natural order of things. If a corporation is experiencing exponential growth, it is so much increase, so much growth. One person said it is runaway expansion. Jesus didn't have time for petty arguments. He had already dealt with these petty, ridiculous arguments among the 12. One of, two, of their mother, two of them had the same mother. Comes up, will you allow my sons, one to sit on your right hand and one to sit on your left hand? Can you imagine? And then all the other disciples got jealous over that. Then you've got John the Beloved who always, when he announces himself, I am the one Jesus loves. Can you imagine? You're shaking hands with somebody at the door this morning. What's your name? Well, my, name, my name's Tommy Swanner, the one the Lord really loves. <laughs> the problem was John was 100% right. He was John the beloved. But the truth is God's love was the same for all. The love of Jesus was available to all. So they were all loved. John just had enough sense to confess it and believe it. Amen. Amen. But Jesus didn't have time for petty arguments and divisions. He needed a group. A group of citizens, kingdom citizens, who would come together, called out ones, called the church, and if he could get them together in his name, then we could have exponential growth, exponential success. We could actually have runaway success. We could have runaway expansion. And can I announce to you that's how the church started, honey, to get 3,000 saved on the first day. And then in the next few days, the Lord added to the church. Then the number of disciples was multiplied, the Bible says. What is that? It's runaway expansion so the world was being evangelized. That's what God's wanting from the church today. God is not holding the church back. But if we can stay in this me mindset, me, all I need is me. We just need a few. And sometimes you'll hear people say, well, now the Lord's cleaning our church out so we can be more holy, and we can do more. I don't see that in Scripture. If he is cleaning anything out, get ready because there's got to be an expansion. Because the Lord is always in the adding business and the multiplication business and the, the business of, of, of causing prosperity to break forth on every side. That's how God works. Now listen to this. This is why this is so important. The devil knows, bless his heart, 
Can you say that about the devil? How dumb is it to get yourself kicked out of heaven? I mean, seriously. You're a lead angel and you get yourself kicked out. And Jesus said, I beheld him. He went so fast. It was like lightning streaking across the sky. That's how fast the devil got himself kicked out. Of hell. How many knows when God kicks you out, <laughs> you are going out. All right. And so the devil, though, I, I, I so not want, I do not want to give him any credit whatsoever. He's not worthy of any credit. But he does know a few things. And he knows this principle of people staying together. He knows this principle of kingdoms staying together. He knows the unity principle. Trust me, he understands why we need to be together. He understands why you need to come together in a local assembly of believers. He understands it more than we may ever understand it, and this is why. He knows that as long as you are by yourself, you may be saved. And yes, there is an anointing on your life, but that anointing is a 1,000. It is a 1,000 production person. I don't know how else to say it. At one, you're a 1,000. But if you dare get with somebody else, now... This runaway expansion becomes possible. So if one can chase a thousand, two could chase ten thousand, the devil says, I can't stop Kenny Hughes from being at the one thousand level, but I gotta keep him from ever getting with brother so and so or sister so and so because the very moment he breaks out of himself and from isolation and individualism, he now gets with somebody, the corporate anointing can kick in. So now he can move from the one thousand level to the ten thousand level, and it doesn't take a genius to figure out 10,000 is always better than a thousand. Are you getting anything out of this? So I looked at that and I thought of it like this. The devil says if I can't stop you from being one, all I got to do is stop you from being two. And many churches have fallen prey to this device because the devil wasn't able to Keep them, you know, at a certain level of doing nothing, but as long as they won't get too big, as long as they won't get united with too many people, as long as too many won't come together and I can keep them small. That's why you've got communities all over our region that have a hundred churches and there's not even 200 people in those communities. (laughs) Now that's an exaggeration. But you would be amazed to know how many churches started out of a church split. And if you knew what some of them split over, you would laugh. Because of the little, insignificant things they split over. But all of a sudden, here comes the devil. He says, I can't stop you from having a church, but I'm going to keep you at a thousand level where you're only going to get a thousand percentage A thousand percent results. But if that church ever figures out what the devil's doing and they come into unity and now they got more than two or three, they got four or five or 10 or 15 or 50 or 75 or 100 or 200 or 500 or 1,000, the exponential runaway expansion will kick him by the anointing and the devil knows his kingdom has had the lick in that community. Do y'all get that? And what happens is you move out of natural to supernatural. Shout supernatural. And it gets down to this simple message 
We are better together. We're better together. We're better together. Somebody said, well, you don't know me. I'm, a, I'm good. You may be good, but we make you better. Amen. Every group is better because they are together. Amen. For instance, we have great musicians, great singers on this platform, but they are better together. Amen. I'm a keyboardist, pianist, but when you put a good bassist with me or a good drummer or guitarist, I am better because they are with me. Something breaks out much more than what I could do as an individual. And it's the same thing with every single ministry group in the church. You are better when you get together. Amen. Better together. Because I take the talent God deposited in me and we take the talent God deposited in you and we take the anointing God put on you and the anointing he put on me and then we bring somebody else in and somebody else and somebody else. What's happening? We are getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and we're getting better results and better results and more results and more results. Somebody said, it's not always about more but the truth is the more who are united in unity, the more results you will have. Say amen to that. Amen. You'll have more. And I get thinking about our ministries here at Grace, and next week we'll take this to a whole other level, but we accomplish more together. We win more together, and we will see more breakthrough together. And I thought about our teams Eddie Hall leads this prison ministry, but he's only one man. But Eddie, with a team of men and even a team of women that are going in the women's section of the jails and the prison, then more people get deliverance. More people get encouraged. More people get prayer. More people get their breakthrough. Do you understand what we're saying? Sheila, she feeds all of Laurel County. <laughs> She tries. And it's amazing because the anointing of the five loaves and two fish is on her. It is absolutely amazing. We have never, ever ran out of food. Never. And we, fight, we feed hundreds of people every single week. Hundreds of people eat food received at the Grace Fellowship Food Pantry, and we never, ever run out. People will line up three and four hours early because they're afraid we're going to run out. We've been at it for years. How many years do you know? I've lost count. Several. Several years. And we have never run out because God multiplies what we've got. But you know what? Sheila is one person. She does better because she has a team. Amen. Let me see everybody. Let's just do this. Everybody stand that has worked or does work at the food pantry here on 229. Stand up right now. Stand up right now. I want to see. She does better. <laughs> Glory to God. Give them a hand clap. She does better because of you. She does better because of you. She does better because of you. Together, you are doing better. And here, just put it in simplistic terms, more people eat because more people serve. Amen. All right, let me take it another level because not everybody can go out there and work on Tuesday. But on the first Sunday of the month, how many have at least threw something in the offering at least once for the food pantry? Raise your hands. Oh, look at that. Now our numbers really went up. And because of your giving, she does more. Because of your giving, this team does. Do you understand the concept? The corporate anointing gets all over this team. And as a result, Laurel Countyans and people from other places are fed and eat. Amen. Can you give the Lord praise for that? <laughs> and we can go through every team that we have, the missions team, together. Sue, wouldn't you hate to have to go over it by yourself? And you've got a team. 
Can you do more because the team goes? Absolutely. And I remember when you finally got some men to go. And she was so excited because we got some men. Now we can build. And ever since then, we've been laboring and building and churches are existing And we got five Grace Fellowship churches. We got Grace Fellowship schools. We got a Grace Fellowship medical clinic. But one person couldn't do all of that. But when a few people join their forces together and their resources together, the corporate anointing kicks in. And she moved from one chasing 1,000 to two chasing 10,000. Isn't that good? And that's why I say to you, I have the goal. I have the vision. We are not going to settle for the one chasing a thousand anointing. I won't say that over here. (laughs) I said we're not going to settle for the one chasing a thousand. We're going to go for the two and ten thousand and the three maybe a hundred thousand. And the four may be 500. So you see, there's no way to put a number on it because who knows what can happen when the anointing of God gets on an anointed group of people who have one mind, one vision. They're in one mind and one accord. There are no limits as to what God can do. (laughs) So we're taking the limits off. I'll close with this. We had the great privilege uh, Thursday night of being with Brother Burchell and Brother Matt Belcher. Is Matt here this morning? I don't see him here, but we had those who were Gideons at Grace Fellowship Church. And we had in that room, I don't know, Birchall, we might have had, what do you think, 50, 75? About 50. Some were pastors. A lot of them were Gideons. And we watched one of the greatest videos. I really enjoyed that video of that man riding that horse to the uttermost parts of the earth. <laughs> Imagine that. I mean, they've they gone as far as they could go driving, and it was on a road that you and I wouldn't want to ride on because it's one of those roads. You ever see these pictures on the Internet, these videos, and these vehicles are right on the side of the cliff, and they're driving, and they're hugging the cliff almost. This wasn't quite that bad, but it was very, very close. Then they get so far and they can't go any further. So now to take the Testaments or the Bibles on to that village, that place, they've got to ride horses. And it isn't just, I mean, they had to ride a horse maybe three hours or more to get over there. How many knows that alone could be a deterrent? (laughs) If you've not sat on a horse, (laughs) but they didn't just ride straight out to a village. No, they're coming down off of mountains and hills, and you're thinking one of two things here. If this horse decides to call it quits and commit suicide, (laughs) this would be very easily done. The other thing that I would be thinking is, this is rocky, dusty terrain. If that horse slips... One slip, and it's right down over the side of this canyon. And so these Gideons rode hours out there. They had to leave one Gideon sitting on the side of a mountain because he couldn't make it. They get out there, and these people are just rejoicing because they get their Bibles. These kids, their eyes just light up. They are so appreciative of receiving that word that they're getting. But I thought, you know, there's no way one man could have done that. There's no man, no way two people could have done that. But because of the Gideons banding together, putting their resources together, pastors bringing them in to speak, offerings being taken, the willingness to go, the willingness to travel, there wasn't a one chases 1,000 anointing at work there. In fact, it was exceeding abundantly above two chasing 10,000. It was a corporate anointing because when that man rode that horse over to that village and passed out those Bibles, 
It was a representation of every church that had ever given an offering and I was made mindful. Grace, fellowship, bless the Gideons and while I may never ride the horse out there across that mountain, I've been there in spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying here? That's why missions offerings are so important. That's why the food pantry is so important. That's why serving on a team is so important. That's why we do what we do together. That's why church is so important because this corporate anointing kicks in and there are no limits with this great anointing. The more we get together, the more we accomplish. And all I can say is let us get together more, more, more and more. May God send us more and more people that we can do more than we've ever done before. And I just prophetically declare Grace Fellowship will hit this thing of rapid growth in so many ministries, in so many communities. I declare that what it took us 10 years to do, we will do in one year or less because of the corporate anointing of the Holy Ghost that will be upon us and all it takes is us to get a mindset we're coming together, we're working together, we're giving together, we're sowing together, we are one body, we are the church and we're gonna make it. Hallelujah. Stand up real quick. Because if you don't stand up, pastor will take a breath and here we'll go. <laughs> Make this good confession. Say together, yes. we are better. Say together, yes. means more. Means more. Don't settle for one chasing 20 or one chasing a thousand if there's something more and Jesus said there is we are going for the more amen, amen. make that say we're going for the more more, more. more blessed more, blessed. more, healed. more healed more souls more, souls. more, more deliverances more, more ministries more, more communities more. more. Now come on, shout more. more. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord praise. And I believe we are going to receive it. Amen. I believe we will receive it. Amen. Bow your heads for just a moment. We don't want to leave without giving you an opportunity to receive the Lord. Jesus is your personal Savior. This is the number one thing when we ask, ask the question, why church? Because we are an evangelical body. We are a body of believers that is not exclusive. We are a body of believers that is not trying to build our group, our clique, and no more. We desire to reach souls. And if you've never be, been saved, you've never received Christ, we're here for you first and foremost. And so right now, with heads about eyes closed, is there anyone here say, Pastor, remember me in prayer. I need the Lord Jesus in my life. I need to be saved. Please pray for me. If that's you right now, between me, you, and the Holy Spirit, would you slip your hand up, please? Okay. I don't see any hands. How many will say to me, Pastor, I'm, I'm part of the church. I'm a believer. I've received Christ. I'm saved. But I need to get more involved with the body. I need to get more involved corporately with the church. And I'm going to do so. I'm going to believe God to do so. I'm going to believe that I can do more in my last, latter days than I've ever done in my beginning days. If that's you, would you slip your hand up right now? Glory to God. God sees all those hands. Amen. Father, you saw these hands. I pray that you'll seal this message in our hearts. Lord, as we come together as one body, to accomplish your work in this earth, in this community, in London. Lord, I ask you to place this great corporate anointing upon this body so we can see more happen. Do more than we've ever done. We receive that from you by faith in Jesus' name. Let's sing a chorus of song right now. Come on. Sing it.